good day everyone my name is uh, mrs mwabaya from the dow academy today i'm going to deliver a lesson on igcsc chemistry uh, on the topic section alkanes right alkanes are homologous series of hydrocarbons which have got similar properties with some little variations they are made up of carbon and hydrogen they contain these two carbon and hydrogen the general formula what we are expected to know the general formula is cn h2n plus 2 right and then we have got the first the first four alkanes here methane which contains carbon uh, one carbon atom and then ethane which contains two carbon atoms and a uh, six uh, uh, hydrogen atoms then propane which has got c three h six and then butane which has got c four h ten right so when doing this um, this uh, general formula uh, it helps us to 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 predict or to come up with a with an alkane. Let's say we are given, for example, it has got uh, two carbon atoms. We can plug in here two carbon atoms here, and then uh, n we put another two. So which means uh, when it has got two uh, carbon atoms, which means hydrogen, it has got uh, six. We put a 2 here, and then where there is an N here, we put a 2, so which means there are 6 uh, hydrogen atoms. So this is the general formula for alkanes, CnH2n plus 2. And these are, so alkanes, they run from methane, ethane, propane, butane, uh, pentane. The one which has got 4 carbon atoms is pentane. The one that has got 6 carbon atoms is hexane. Right, so this is the the tricky of uh, um, the naming part of uh, our canes. Monkeys eat peanut butter, then follow the beginning of names like pentagon, hexagon, like that. Right. These are the, the as far as bonding is concerned about our canes. Our canes, they have a covalent bond they've got covalent bonds as you can see this is a covalent bond this is a covalent bond these are covalent bonds all these are covalent bonds Cover in between carbon atoms this is a covalent bond and then each carbon atom is bonded to four hydrogen atoms each carbon atom is bonded to four hydrogen atoms remember carbon has got four electrons in the outermost shell so it needs it needs four more electrons. So it's going to share uh, um, and have four pairs of electrons in the in the bonding pair for it to be stable. Uh, in the bonding pairs, each H is bonded to one carbon atom. High, high bond enthalpies for the the energy that is needed to break the CH is high. Then there is low bond polarity. They are generally unreactive because of the single, single bonds, which means they are saturated. They cannot, uh, they can undergo certain reactions, which we are going to look at, but generally they are unreactive because of single bonds, which increase their stability. Except combustion, they undergo combustion. And also, when they are exposed to UV light, they undergo uh, substitution reaction. Right, depending on the length of the carbon, uh, the properties they depend on the length of the carbon, of the carbon chains. The longer the chain, the higher the boiling point. The longer the chain, the less volatile it is. The longer the chain, the less flammable it is. So, which means this one has a lower boiling point as compared to this one because it has a longer chain. And then this one it is a uh, more volatile as compared to that one this one it is uh, less volatile 
this one is more volatile because we are saying the longer the carbon chain the less volatile it is so which means the shorter the 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 carbon chain the more volatile it is and we are saying that for example here this one it is less flammable i mean this one is more flammable this one is less flammable right so this one is pentane it has got five carbon atoms one two three four five and then it has got uh, the hydrogen atoms around itself it has got 12 you can see here there are 5 plus 5 that's 10 plus 1 2 that's 12 then and this one it exists as a liquid and this one exists as gases they are gases so as you can see as the carbon chains increase they change from gaseous state to liquid then to solid you can see this one is longer than the former which is butane has got four then when we reach here it has got five so which means it is now less volatile because it has got more carbon atom pentane is less volatile than um uh, butane so which means it is now a liquid now this one they are really long chains they've got many carbon atoms as you can see it's a long chain of carbon atoms and these are now solids properties of alkanes mainly used to make fuel the fuel that we use for for driving our cars and so forth and then uh they undergo complete combustion if they are exposed to enough oxygen if they are exposed to less oxygen, they undergo incomplete combustion. Release large amounts of energy when bent, when bent in oxygen. They release a lot of energy. And then exothermic reaction. Okay, what we mean when we say exothermic reaction? We mean a reaction which releases heat. It releases heat to the surroundings. And H and carbon, that is hydrogen and carbon atoms are oxidized. Right, an example. Write the equation for the complete combustion of propane. Write the equation for the complete combustion of propane. Right. If you look at this, this is propane. Propane has got three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. If it undergoes complete combustion, it gives rise to carbon dioxide and water. So what needs to happen? to happen is that one has to know how to balance this equation sometimes you are given an incomplete equation where you are given this propane and then they put oxygen and then they skip this five then they put carbon dioxide and water and then they expect you to fill up the uh, the spaces one should note that there are three carbon atoms here so which means for me to balance we put i put a big three in front of carbon we don't put a small three here we put a big three and then the hydrogen atoms you see they are eight this side and this side they are two so for me to balance i put a big four in front of hydrogen and this balances then the oxygen atoms they are they are 10 so which means here which for me for me to make them 10 here is three times two that's six and then plus four this four is affecting this oxygen so that makes it 10 oxygen on the left and 10 oxygen on the right. So this is the tricky as far as combustion. One needs to know how to balance. When complete combustion is done, they give rise to carbon dioxide and water. Right. Then it comes to incomplete combustion. Let's go back. This complete combustion, it takes place in cars. Let's say a car is well serviced and there is no shortage of air to the engine. The, 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 the fuel which it is there is completely bent to release energy. Carbon dioxide which is produced in water, it comes out as vapor. The carbon dioxide, they all escape to the atmosphere. Then this happens when there is incomplete combustion. Let's say there is lack of oxygen. In a, let's say for example in a, in a car engine. The, the alkane, it is incompletely bent and we give rise to carbon monoxide and water. Or we can say the, the, 
propane, it burns incompletely and it gives rise to carbon and, and water. This is the soot that we see coming out of the, of the, of the car when there is incomplete combustion of, of the fuel. Right. Then the physical properties. The physical properties. Generally, our canes have got low melting and boiling point. This is due to weak intermolecular forces that exist. These are called Van der Waals forces, which can uh, be overcome by a small amount of heat. So which means they have got low melting and boiling point. And then as the alkane molecules become larger, in terms of their um, atoms, the carbon number, the, the number of carbon atoms increases, the intermolecular forces become stronger. So the bigger or the longer the, the alkane is, the higher the boiling point. More heat is needed to overcome intermolecular forces of attraction to separate the mo molecules. Hence, the melting and boiling point increase. So we are saying in a nutshell that the shorter the alkane is, the lower its boiling and melting point. The longer the alkane is, the higher the boiling point, the higher the melting point. For example, if you look at hexane and methane, hexane has a higher melting point, boiling point, as compared to methane. Why? Because hexane has got six carbon atoms, methane has got one carbon atom. Right. And then we go to the physical properties of alkane. They are non-polar compounds. They do not have any polarity. They are insoluble in water. Compounds that are soluble in water, they are ionic compounds, those that exhibit charge. If they do not have charge, they are insoluble in water. They are less denser than water, so they will float on top of the water. And then they dissolve in organic solvents in, in, uh, in each other. Right? They've got low melting and boiling point as compared to other ionic compounds, or let's say let, as compared to ionic compounds, or as compared to metals, they've got low melting and boiling point. But it should be noted, take note, the boiling and melting points of alkanes it increases with the number of carbon atoms. Right. Then we go to the chemical properties. Now that we have looked at the physical properties of um, of alkanes, which is melting point, boiling point, also their density. Take note of the density. The density increases as you increase the number of carbon atoms. The lower the, the number of carbon atoms, the lower the density. Then we come to the chemical properties. Like we said, if the alkanes, they are exposed to enough oxygen, they undergo complete combustion like alkane plus oxygen then we form carbon dioxide plus water vapor the the water is not in liquid form is in vapor as you can see on the symbol equation here the water vapor is in gaseous state so methane that is ch4 when it is reacted with enough oxygen it forms carbon dioxide and water and this is an exothermic reaction why are we saying is an exothermic reaction. You can see the delta H, it is, it is giving a negative value here. So this shows that this reaction is releasing heat to the surrounding uh, in, uh, area. So the reaction is highly exothermic. A large amount of heat is released. This is why alkanes make good fuel. Right. Substitution reactions of alkanes. With chlorine, alkanes they undergo substitution reactions with halogens in the presence of light. Halogens they are those elements that are found in the group seven. We start with fluorine, chlorine, uh, we go to bromine, iodine, astatine. Those are the elements that are called halogens. This takes us back to the periodic table. So alkanes they undergo substitution reaction when they are exposed to more especially uv light when they are exposed to uv light and the halogen is pre present for example methane when it is exposed to uv light ultraviolet light reacts with the halogen such as chlorine and bromine this reaction is a substitution reaction because 
one hydrogen atom from methane is replaced by bromine. And this can happen with all hydrogen atoms if there is enough chlorine or if there is enough hydrogen or if there is enough bromine. Like, uh, so in, in a nutshell, it depends on the quantity of the, the light and also the availability of the halogen. Like for example, methane, when it is one of its uh, chlorine is substituted, we say chloromethane. And then if two of its hydrogen is substituted with say dichloromethane, if three is substituted, we call trichloroethane. And then if four are substituted with four, we say tetrachloromethane. Right. The ultraviolet is simply a source of energy and it is used to break the bonds. In fact, the energies in the UV are exactly right to break the bonds in chlorine molecules to produce chloride. chloride. Alkanes do not react very well with halogens, but only in bright light. This is an example of a substitution reaction. Alkanes can react with halogens in the presence of UV side to form an acid. This is the acid HCl, hydrochloric acid, and then the substituted alkane. So methane, which is CH4, it can react with this one, uh, the, the chlorine. The chlorine is split here. This bond is broken using UV light. And then this bond is broken using the bond between CH. Remember, this is a very strong bond. The bond between CH is broken and then the bond between chlorine is broken and then this chlorine one of them it will come and take the position of hydrogen then we form chloromethane and hcl and then if there is enough we form this is chloromethane and hcl and then when we further substitute the other hydrogen we form dichloromethane when we further substitute we form trichloromethane tri coming from three is tri right and then when we further substitute we form tetrachloro tetra for four tetrachloromethane so this is the substitution an example of substitution we can put ethane here when we substitute we form chloroethane we substitute further we form dichloro uh, ethane. We substitute further, we form trichloroethane. We substitute, we form tetrachloroethane. So, this is uh, in a nutshell the reactions that the, the alkanes they undergo. To summarize about alkanes, one has to know alkanes they are hydrocarbons, they contain hydrogen and carbon, they belong to the same homologous series, which means they have got, uh, they undergo same uh, chemical reactions, and then they differ in one way or the other in terms of their uh, being, uh, the ability to be volatile, the ability to boil, the ability to melt. So one has to take note that as you, as the uh, alkanes, we move from a, a shorter chain to a longer chain, the melting and boiling point increases as we increase the carbon atoms. And then we are saying also the alkanes, as they become longer and longer, they become less volatile. As, as the carbon chains, they become um, longer, they become less volatile. So in a nutshell, we are saying methane exists as a gas because it's more volatile. And then we look, for example, for those that have got longer and longer chains, they become liquids and then they become solids. So the more the chains are, the less, the more the carbon atoms are, the less volatile they become. The less the carbon atoms are, the more volatile they become. And then in terms of their density, the density also increases with the number of carbon atoms. So those are the physical properties of the, the alkanes. And take note of the general formula of the alkanes. And take note uh, that one should not confuse with other hydrocarbons. Alkanes, the, the general formula 
it's CN with an N at the bottom, the N representing the number of carbon atoms, then H2N plus 2. The N you substitute with the number of carbon atoms. Let's say we are taking 3, we are going to put a 3 here, this is C3, and then for the H we say 2 multiplied by 3 to get 6 plus 2, we get 8, that is propane. This is the general formula that must be mastered. And then, uh, the other section that I would want to summarize is that our canes, they undergo complete combustion if they are exposed to enough oxygen. Um, and they are good source of energy. They release, when they are completely burnt, they release a larger amount of energy. Which, uh, which means if they burn, they release, um, they are, uh, they, the reaction is exothermic, it releases a lot of energy to the surroundings, as symbolized by the negative uh, um, value that was on the former reaction. Then alkanes, if they are not exposed to enough uh, oxygen, they undergo incomplete combustion, and this gives uh, a product called carbon monoxide, which is hazardous to our health, because carbon monoxide, it irreversibly combines with the hemoglobin, and this reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin. So it is um, hazardous to our health. Then, uh, alkanes, we, we summarize again. Alkanes, they are, used, they are used as a fuel, and alkanes, they undergo chemical reactions such as substitution reaction. Substitution, we talk about halogens. When there is UV light, the halogens, they can be broken by the strong UV light. And then the CH bond that exists, this CH bond that exists between uh, the carbon and the hydrogen, it can be broken by UV light. And this will result in the halogen that is broken to come and take the position of what? of hydrogen leading to a substitution reaction. We have looked at uh, chloromethane, dichloromethane, methane, dichloro, uh, trichloroethane, tetrachloroethane as a result. And one can be asked what are the conditions that are needed for a substitution reaction. One is UV light is needed and there should be also the presence of a halogen so that a substitution reaction. So the chemical reaction they undergo alkanes is a substitution reaction and they undergo complete combustion in the presence of oxygen, incomplete combustion in the absence of oxygen or not in the, uh, in the presence of not enough oxygen. So this is the summary of alkanes. We have looked and take note of the naming. We move from methane, ethane, propane, um, butane, uh, pentane, hexane. Our syllabus requires us to know uh, those that are the, the top six. Of course, it does not rule out. You can be asked that, uh, what about the one which has got seven carbon atoms? But it's always safe to know uh, the rest of all and so that whatever that comes, you are in a position to answer. I expect you to revise this one thoroughly and make sure that you do not make a mistake as far as the general formula is concerned. Thank you very much for your time. Um, God bless. Um, stay home, stay safe, sanitize. Thank you.